Now let's cover depreciation expense. Recall from our balance sheet example that we purchased equipment of 80. This equipment of 80 was recorded as a non-current asset under the heading Property Plan and Equipment. Now, let's assume that the useful life of this equipment is four years. Let's also assume that we could allocate the usefulness of this equipment evenly over four years. And additionally, at the end of the four years, it will have a scrap value or salvage value of 30. So the question now is, how would we account for the reduction in value of the equipment as it's used in our operations? Well, the answer is that we would record an expense called depreciation that would spread out the cost of this equipment over its useful life. Let's look at depreciation in more detail. On the income statement, we record a depreciation expense. We calculate that expense by taking the purchase price of the equipment, subtracting the scrap value at the end of its life, and dividing it by the number of useful lives that it has. When we make that calculation, the result is a depreciation expense of 12.5 per year for four years. This is what will be recorded on the income statement for each of the four years that the asset is depreciated. But this is only half of the equation. Now let's take a look at what happens on the balance sheet. On the balance sheet, we have to record a property plant and equipment balance. In order to record the balance, we take the initial purchase price, reduce it by the depreciation expense, and we get the closing balance that will go on the balance sheet at the end of the first year. Then in the second year, we start where we left off the prior year. We again deduct depreciation expense of 12 and a half, and we get a closing balance in year two of 55. In year three, we follow the same pattern, taking the prior year, ending balance, subtracting the depreciation expense, and getting this period's closing balance, 42.5. Finally, in the last year, year four, when we deduct depreciation, we arrive at the scrap value of 30. That means that from here on out, if this asset remains on the balance sheet, it will stay at 30 and not go lower. If it is sold in the future for any value, then it will be removed from the assets of the balance sheet. So in summary, the day the asset is purchased, it goes on the balance sheet at the purchase price of 80. It's then reduced over the period of four years by 12.5, which is the depreciation expense each year. Finally, it ends at a salvage value of 30.